Google Gemini recently upgraded their new image model to Nano Banana Pro, which is now 10 times better. And it has completely changed the way that individuals and companies are not able to work with visuals, images, and the way that they make designs. And in this video, I'm gonna show you 10 insane business use cases where you can actually use this model, whether that's in sales, marketing, finance, and operations. With that being said, let's dive in. All right, so you can actually find this model if you go to gemini.google.com, you can find it here. And under tools, you can press create images. And now this will actually use the model. You can also press the button here, try it. And this will just give you a test prompt to be able to try this model out. As you can see here, it just made this graphic right here. And the other way that you can use this model is if you go to the aistudio.google.com and you get to this page right here and you can press try Nano Banana Pro and it will take you here to this page. Now, the main difference as to why I use the Google AI Studio rather than the Google Gemini is because we have the settings on the right here, which is the temperature. We have the aspect ratio which is the actual format of the image. So let's say I wanna make a YouTube thumbnail, which is 16 by nine. I tell it the actual aspect ratio, so it knows. And then the resolution. So you can do 4K, 2K and 1K. Where 4K is obviously the best and 1K is the worst. And you can also use tools like Google search right here, grounding with Google search, which will be able for the model to use search features when it's making the design. Something that right here in Google Gemini, you don't have the options to choose. But bear in mind that to be able to use this, you have to pay and you have to link your API key which works the same as you linking it to your Anytime account, you would have to pay credits. Uh, so bear that in mind. Now, the first use case here is that we're now able to generate clear text. As you can see here, we have the ability to turn an input like this into a graphic that looks like this, a comic book, right? And the text itself is perfect. Now, previously, we were able to do this, but not to the extent where the text itself had no uh, sort of problems. The same way that you can do this, you can do something like this. Now I'm not gonna try to read it out because I'm gonna get it wrong, but you see this actual thing right here. All the words are perfect. There's no punctuation errors and everything is pretty much clear. Same thing with this, Berlin. It took the actual word and it created a design for it. Same thing with this, this right here where it turns different words into different kinds of designs. This right here as well, this and this and this, right? So these are all different use cases when it comes to the actual text. Of the, of the actual model. Now putting this to work, let's say that I do have a uh, image that looks like this with a product that has shampoo in the middle. And let's say an e-commerce brand wanted to change this and put their name instead, right? To do a mock-up sort of product. I can go here and I can paste this prompt right here. So replace the text in the shampoo bottle to JM Solutions. And I can now also upload the file. So upload file here and put the actual shampoo bottle. And I'm gonna press 4K resolution to get the best uh, resolution here. I'm gonna press run. As you can see here, the output is a shampoo bottle that's 4K with JM Solutions in the middle. Right, the positioning, everything is the exact same. All it did is just change the actual text. Same thing here where I have this dryer and the text itself, it's not so, so visible like the other one. But here we have Hot Tools Signature Series. And right here I can say replace the text with Hello World. So you can see here we have the actual image as well with the Hello World Signature Series and everything else is the exact same. And one more difference I forgot to mention with using Google Gemini in here is that here there's no trademark. So when I make an image in Google Gemini, we have this little thing in the bottom right, something that here we don't have, which is a feature that we actually pay for. And on the content side, let's say we have a thumbnail like this and we wanna change the words to qualified prospects. I can paste the thumbnail here and I can say, change the words to qualified prospect. I can press run. And as we can see here, qualified prospects, everything else is the exact same, the words changed. If my thumbnail designer is looking at this, bro, you're cooked. And again, these use cases right here are great for e-commerce brands, for food and skincare brands, because they have different products and they have to change the text of those products. Something that used to take them two weeks, now it takes them minutes, especially when you do it at scale with more and more products. All right, and the second use case is real world knowledge. Now this is the ability for Gemini to actually use search when making infographics. For example, here, it made an infographic using this prompt right here. And the prompt itself gives it words, but also gives it a link to a Wikipedia so that it uses that as a way for it to actually make the infographic. So it has some context, which is insane considering that we have an input that looks like this and the prompt itself is create an infographic about this plant focusing on interesting information. And it gives us the infographic here. And the exact same is this. And again, these prompts aren't crazy. We just say create an infographic that shows how to make tea, right? And it gives us step by step. And of course it uses Google where it does research before giving us the image. And same thing with this as well. Now, the best use case that I can think of this is education technology companies because they have to make infographics every single time for students, right? And when they have to explain something that looks like this, well, all they have to do really is put an image, right, of something and a small prompt, maybe a few links, if they wanna reference a few links with information, and it will spit out this whole infographic. So the students are able to learn faster. 
Now, the third use case is translate and localize your ideas. Now, this is specifically good for global consumer brands because they have different products like these, and they're taking those exact products and in the same way as the first one, but in this case, it actually puts the product in different places. So in this case, all it did is just turn the actual text into Korean. I think that's Korean, yeah. But it also took an input that looks like this and the same thing that looks like this, right? Different background and so on. And taking something like this and turning it into something that looks like this. As I mentioned, the biggest use case that I can think of this is global consumer brands, because these brands in specific, they have different products. And the product itself, because it's global, they uh, sell it to different companies. They sell it across different countries. And so if they go to Korea, they can simply switch out to Korean. If they go to the US, well, they switch it out to English. And so by having this in place, they can do this at scale with different products and change the languages or change different things when going out to different countries. And it's crazy looking at this because just six months ago, we didn't even think this was possible, right? And now it's made within seconds. The next use case is design, style, and standardize. And this one here is one of the best use cases in the video because it's taking an idea something that looks like this and turning it into different images that look like these. Where we take the actual sort of idea or object and we turn it into different kinds of graphics and designs that we can use for the actual company campaigns. Or taking something that looks like this, which is just a scribble and something that looks like this as well to be able to make this right here, which is very, very high level. Or something that looks like this and an input that looks like this. And finally, we make this chair right here. Or having this here, which turns into all these images. Now, I worked with a lot of brand agencies before, creative agencies. Now, their job is to make brand creatives, which means that they spend weeks turning something that looks like this into something that looks like this, into sort of a brand uh, brand creative, where brand creatives are just creatives of the brand. Whether it's in a bag, whether it's in a t-shirt, whether it's just a some sort of drawing or a poster, they actually do this manually right now. And so by having this in place, AI is now able to make all these graphics, all these design creatives for those clients. And not only did this remove the need to hire more brand people for the brand creative agencies, uh, because now you're able to just make it in seconds, but also the skill that you really wanna learn here is the ability to prompt because something that looks like this was turned into something that looks like this. And so that's really the skill when it comes to turning an idea into some sort of concrete object or um, design. And one more use case that I can think of this, let's say we have a startup that's making cars like these, they need uh, logos, they need mockups or visuals that they need instantly when launching. And so by having something so simple as an input, they're able to do all these things in a matter of minutes. The next use case is studio quality control. This is the ability for us to take some sort of image and use different angles of the image. An example of this would be the input that is this with the focus more on her face to the output that looks like this, where the focus is less on her and more on the people behind her. We're having an image like this, where the focus is entirely on his face to having an image that looks like this, where the focus is less on his face and more of his hand. And we have another example like this. Now, this again is one of the best use cases, especially for e-commerce brands, because Typically, they have different images of products. And for the product images that they have in the catalog for, for that specific brand or the client, they need to have different angles, different sort of visuals, different ways of looking at things. And so by having this in place, this again removes the hours that they spend every single time on creating those product images or designs and do it in a matter of seconds. Of course, it depends on the prompt. But again, look at the prompt here. Focus on the faces of the crowd and make the one blurry. Very, very simple prompt but such a high impact and such high quality as well with the way that it actually does things, uh, which is great for these kind of businesses. And again, typically companies to shoot something that looks like this, they would have real cameras, high quality um, sort of environments, and it will cost a lot of money, especially when it comes to running big campaigns uh, with more products and more designs. The next use case is color and lighting. Now this is adjusting the colors of the actual images. So for example, we have this turning into this or this here, turning into this. We have one here as well, turning into this. And finally, we have this, which turns into this. And it's still pretty nuts that AI can do all of this. <laughs> and the thing that blows my mind the most is the actual prompt that it used. Change the daytime. People would think that you need prompt engineering skills to turn something like this into this, but that's not true anymore. And in terms of businesses that can use this, these are great for creative studios because creative studios, when they have to make ads, they need different color schemes for those ads. And so by having this in place, they're able to take different angles, but also different kinds of colors uh, to the actual design. And another use case that I can think of is real estate marketers. Because when I have a photo shoot of a house, they ideally want it in nighttime, but also in daytime. The next use case is increasing the precision of the actual designs. And so by having an input that looks like this, we have something that looks like this, which is not only higher quality, but it focuses more on the actual object. So something that looks like this cannot be turned into something that looks like this, which is more zoomed in, and more focused on the actual thing. Same thing with this, 
input image to something that is like this. Right, so zoomed in and so detailed as well. And that's the setting that we used, right? The actual resolution at 4K. 4K is like the, the most you can get to. And these are great for businesses like print shops because they have to take banners, so high resolutions of images uh, for banners or for posters when they actually make them. The same way we have marketing agencies where they often get very low quality assets from the clients. And so by having this in place, so upscaling the actual precision or just making the image better, right? Higher quality. They're able to take those marketing assets and actually use them tangibly to create ads or to create content or whatever it is that they have to do. The next use case is aspect ratios. So this is the ability for us to take the exact same image and give it to us in different ratios. So for example, right here, if I go to the aspect ratio, I can see that I'm now able to choose 1 to 1, 9, 16, 16, 9, 3, 4, 4, 3, and 3, 2. These are the different aspect ratios, is the size of the image. So something like this is a 16 by 9 thumbnail. But if I put here 9, 16, now change it to say, hello world, and I run this, it should now give me the actual thumbnail in a 916 aspect ratio. As we can see here, the nine by 16, I assume is like an Instagram reel or a LinkedIn post. And it turned out to be something like this. And it even resized the actual objects in the thumbnail so that it fit the actual creative. Now, this is great in case you wanna make YouTube thumbnails or in case you wanna make Instagram reels or LinkedIn posts, right? So now you have a variety of different ways that you can uh, put an image, which is amazing because now it gives us a lot more control when making the designs. And this is great specifically for social media agencies because when they need to post in different platforms, the aspect ratio changes. So on LinkedIn, it might be something that looks more like this, but on Instagram, it might be something that looks more like this, right? Or this. And YouTube is a 16 by nine. So every single platform has their own aspect ratios. So by having this in place, it saves the time of having to resize or Photoshop or edit the images ourselves. The next use case is subject consistency. So as you can see here, we turned the different inputs, which turned this input right here. So 14 images of these characters. And all it said is a medium shot of 14 fluffy characters sitting squeezed together side by side on a warm beige fabric sofa on the floor. And it gives us the output like this, which is, which is insane, uh, especially for the quality and the way that everything is set up. It's so consistent with the way that it gives us the output. And we have something like this. So let's say a company had different assets that they wanted to put in the same place, which is this guy right here with the dress, the dress itself, the sofa, the uh, actual plant and the painting here. And you can put it all together in the same exact image for something that looks like this. And we have a similar thing here with all these different uh, images to give us one final image here. And it goes on and on and on, right? We have this, 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 and this, which gives us now one image here. And the business use case to this is the ability for brands, typically they have different models or the different um, subjects that they wanna put in the same picture. So instead of going outside to actually film or to take pictures, all they have to do is just get the creatives of the person or whether they have different people, the actual objects that we need, uh, whether it's the bench, whether it's the dog, whether it's the, the actual dress itself and put them all in the same place. And to previously do this, they had to go to different places to shoot. It would cost a lot of money and they would spend weeks to be able to perfect these designs for the clients that they run the creatives for. And the last use case is the ability for us to use one prompt to give us a whole storyboard. And this is great for film studios, right? Because they have to turn, I guess, a character into different uh, mood boards, different storyboards, where we have a series of characters, obviously with the theme of the actual dress or whatever it is that they have going on, uh, the colors, to be able to give us a whole storyboard for the cartoon that we're making or for whatever it is that we're doing. Or for advertising agencies that run ads, sometimes they just need some quick campaign uh, concepts. Ad campaigns just means that the ads that they run for a specific campaign, for a run, for some sort of product or service that they're doing. And so to get some sort of ideas, all they have to do is give it an input of maybe a product or maybe a person, and it gives them different ideas as to what it could do. And as the last bonus use case, it's next level generation. So this is the ability for us to use a prompt to generate high realistic landscapes, plants, people, or something that looks like this, buildings that looks like these, which are pretty much insane to think that it can do, right? And the best use case that I can think of this is architectural firms, because architects, they have to render the actual buildings. So let's say we have this sort of roadmap of a house, and I said, generate a hyper-realistic house, brown color and nice backyard, which needs to be, even the prompt is pretty bad, but we'll see what it cooks up and press run. And it turned this right here, into something that looks like this, which conceptualizes, so it turns an idea, right? Because this is an idea of what the actual building would look like into an actual execution, right? That the architect are now used to show the client or to have as a proof of concept for what they do. And although this might be perfect, there are some limitations in the visuals, in the data, in the translations with text 
the edits, and also character features as well. So you can take a look at this. So those right there were 10 different use cases where you can use the new Nano Banana Pro model in an actual business, whether that's in sales, marketing, operations, or finance as well. And if you want to dive deeper into Gemini, check out this video up here, where I show you the new Gemini 3.0 model, which is absolutely insane when it comes to vibe coding. With that being said, I hope you found value from this video, and I'll see you in the next one.